In today's video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about setting up a pop-up shop. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I want to make this video because I am about to be going to a craft show. It's a one day kind of pop-up shop and I'm gonna be taking a lot of my woodworking creations. What I want to do with this video is kind of tell you some of the, not only products that I'll be taking, but also some of the supplies that I use, things that you might not think about, but that will come in really, really handy as you're spending an entire day or maybe an entire weekend um, selling your product, whether you make uh, woodworking items or whether you make something else, candles, soap, whatever it is. Now, I do want to apologize that um, I'm literally sitting uh, crisscross applesauce in the floor right now. We're still uh, setting up the office in here in our new house. And so that's why there's a picture that my awesome uh, Jenny Lake Museum picture, but it's on the floor. So bear with me. Eventually, I'm going to have my uh, setup much better. But thank you for tuning in and checking out this video. Before we go any further, if you could hit the like button, it will help other people find this content. So if, if there's something in this uh, video that's helpful for you or if you learn something, you can hit that like button. It's free and it's just the way that you give back on YouTube. Okay, let's get into today's video. Okay, so uh, these are something new. I've never uh, sold these before, but these are just candle holders. I actually had these little, I don't even know what these are called. They're candles that are in a glass jar. And so I just took some white oak. I think this is about two inch thick, maybe inch and a half thick white oak, drilled a hole in it and put the candle in. Um, one thing I like about these candles is they have glass around them, so it's much safer. You never really want to put a candle uh, that's just wax into uh, a wooden holder because obviously wood is flammable. But since these have the glass around them, I feel fine about selling these. And uh, also the candle is very stable. And these I think will probably sell pretty quickly. I have, uh, let's see, I have six of these short ones. I might sell them at a set or I might sell them individually. I'll probably put like five bucks on each of these. So right here, I mean, you think this is so easy, but it's $30. Um, so really, really great there. And then uh, these are slightly taller. This is actually several boards. I don't know if you can see this that are, have been glued together this way and the candle rises up a little bit taller. So I'll probably sell these for $5 as well. I know it's a little bit more, um, more wood that was used, but I, I don't know. I'm just gonna sell them for $5. So right here, I think we got $50 worth of candle holders. While we're talking about candle holders, I actually forgot I have these. This is a, obviously two, uh, three candle holders, the same exact candles. Uh, this is not white oak, but it's maple. It's about two inches thick and it has a little um, angle here. Once again, I just made this super quickly. This is almost probably something I was doing to get rid of a piece of scrap wood and get some of these candles out of the shop. I'll probably sell this for like 10 bucks a piece. So $70 total of candle holders. Okay, obviously up next what we have are some scrap wood coasters. And I have all types of different kinds of wood in here. I mean, I see black walnut, I see oak, I see black walnut again. I think this is sapile. So lots of different kinds of wood here. Um, and I have even more that I, this is just a few that I wanted to put out for this video. These are really good. Now, here's why I like to have something like coasters. I'm probably gonna sell these for probably four bucks a piece, and maybe I'll sell them for cheaper if you buy them a set of four, maybe like four for 15. I think I did the math right on that. Yeah, maybe four for 15. But I like these because they're a very low price point, and so it gets someone started doing business with you. Like you'll see in a second, I'll have a bunch of charcuterie boards and cutting boards. And some of those can be like $80 purchases. And that's a lot of money for someone to spend, especially if they're going to visit other booths. But they might say, oh, I really like these coasters. And maybe they'll buy two coasters, that's $8. And they take my business card. And then they remember next time they're looking for uh, a woodworker, they'll be like, oh, there's that guy that I bought those coasters from. And then they might go back and buy one of my more expensive items. Um, also, if they can buy something cheap and see that you are easy to do business with, and keep in mind later in the video, I'm going to show you um, my credit card setup and how easy that is. Uh, when they see how easy you are to do business with, 
they'll want to maybe come back and get something from you later once they've visited all the other booths at the event. So have something like kind of front and center that's a lower price point that people can see and you can get some, get some cash that way. One more reason I like lower price point items is this is something that kids can buy. You don't have to have a lot of money, obviously, to buy something that's cheap. And so maybe a little kid will come by and be like, I wanna buy one coaster for my mom. And it's, it's super sweet. And uh, yeah, it's just, it, it, it kind of gives you more people who can potentially buy your products. And I think that's a good thing. All right, one more note while we're on coasters. I also have these. These are packs of two, and they're what I call Barnwood coasters. They're actually uh, reclaimed lumber from a barn, I think from North Carolina or something like that. And I have a bunch more of these. I probably have maybe 12 sets of these Barnwood coasters. And I'll sell these for $8 for a set. So once again, $4 on a coaster. Um, I love the uh, twine that kind of bundles them together. Once again, think about small ways that you can present your products that will be appealing to people. This twine, I mean, it cost me a couple of bucks for the whole spool, but that will really, really help me uh, present my products and people will be like, oh, this is so cute and they'll buy it. Eight bucks, easy money. So right here, I mean, just right here, that's $24. I probably have $100 worth of just these coasters. Okay, so on to the next thing. I have right here one of my large charcuterie boards. This is maple and black walnut. This is just a really simple design. I have several different variations of charcuterie boards. Some are flat right here, which I like because you can uh, stand it up against a backsplash of a counter. Some are round, which is just kind of gives it a neat look. Uh, people love to uh, touch these. My charcuterie boards, uh, kind of one of my things that make my boards stand out, I think for a lot of the ones, especially if you get like a, a big box store, is they're much thicker. And so that just kind of gives them a great feel. So uh, this particular board, I'll probably sell for like 40 bucks, maybe 45. Black Walnut sells really well. People love the dark wood and it's more expensive. So probably $45 for this board. I have a ton of charcuterie boards from cherry and maple and lots of different types of wood. And really I kind of price them individually. They're kind of in families of like small, medium, large, extra large. And they range in price from $20 to $60, just depending on how big the board is and what the wood, uh, what type of wood it is. But I have a lot of charcuterie boards. Also, I have uh, one of my end grain cutting boards. This has a ton of exotic woods and it's a pretty small cutting board, but um, the checker pattern is really, really nice. And I don't know if you can see this with the lighting in here right now, but I even have some purple heart down the middle. Um, this pattern just turned out really, really nice. So I'll probably sell this for 50 bucks. Okay, so I was just talking about the large charcuterie board and here are my other large charcuterie boards. And I just wanted to show you these so you can see that I take a lot of different varieties. There's uh, different shapes, there's different um, glue up patterns that I've used here. Uh, this one's like a lot wider. So yeah, and I say all that to say, different people will like different things. So make sure you have a good variety. And these are just my large ones. I actually have some smaller charcuterie boards that I'll be taking to the show right over here. So I would recommend, especially if you're a woodworker, bring a variety. Also, if you're interested in learning how to make these charcuterie boards, check out this video. And uh, yeah, you'll learn all about how I made these charcuterie boards. All right, on to the next thing. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's like law that you have to, if you're a woodworker, have cutting boards if you go to sell your stuff. So uh, I have some large cutting boards here. This one's probably, I don't even know if you can see the whole thing, but it's probably 12 inches by 18 inches. I have uh, different type glue ups. This is a mostly black walnut board. This one right here, since it's mostly black walnut, I'll probably sell this for 85 to 100 bucks. This is cherry black walnut, probably sell it for the same. Since this one's more maple, this will probably be about 75. I have this one as well. This will probably be about, probably about uh, 85, $90. I, I'm saying probably, and you know, I might change the price. If things are flying off the shelf, sometimes what I'll do is I'll bump my prices a little bit up because that market might be more willing to spend more money. And then if it's a little bit of a slower day and I'm like, you know what, I've had these cutting boards for a while, 
I want to get them moved. I might put them on sale and move the price down a little bit. So, you know, every, every pop-up shop is different. And uh, like I'm in the North Georgia area. And if I did one up here in a mountain town, it might be totally different if I, than if I did a market outside of Atlanta. Those are two totally different customer bases. So just keep that in mind when you're pricing your work. Uh, right here, I have some different serving boards. This is just a different shape that I was experimenting with. These right here are, um, I don't even know what these are. I've taken these to a few shows, so I'm gonna price these pretty low just to get them out of here. But basically what they are is like, you know, a table runner type thing that you could put in the middle of a table and put decor on. That's at least what I had in mind when I built these. So I might sell like this for 10 bucks, 20 and 30, something like that. These, I'm probably looking like 20 a piece. All right, up next we have, I don't even know if you can see me through this, a Live Edge bench. This is uh, Black Walnut, Live Edge obviously. Uh, I did a waterfall joint right here and then braced it underneath with a cutoff and then I have uh, pegs right here. This was honestly, I had a small Live Edge slab and just wanted to try something new. I actually wanted to practice the waterfall joint and I think it turned out pretty, uh, pretty well. Not the not perfect, but pretty well. So I'll probably sell this stool for about a hundred bucks. Black walnut's just super expensive. It flies off the shelf. So stool, live edge. There we go. All right. Up next, we have these lantern style candle holders. And I actually made a video on my channel about making these as well. Super easy build. Great way to get scrap wood out of the shop and sell it for a little bit of cash. So. Uh, these, I mean, they probably took me 10 minutes a piece to build. They're so, so easy. And with a candle in each one, I'll probably sell them for 20 bucks a piece. Okay, up next I have all of the botany stuff uh, that I sell, all of the plant holders and plant terrariums. Now, these succulent planters sell like crazy. Believe it or not, with a succulent, I price these between 18 and $20 a piece and they sell, uh, they're my most sold item. I've probably sold, the last show I did, um, maybe $300 worth of these succulent planters. They sell really, really well. And once again, kind of like with the coasters, it's a lower price point item that people can can buy and give as a, as a gift, as a stocking stuffer. People just love these. And also I would say, you'll definitely want to take a moment and subscribe to my channel because in just a few weeks, I'm going to be posting a video on how I make these different design ideas with them. And I don't want you to miss that. So go ahead and hit subscribe. And that way, when I post that video, it will be on your YouTube page. One more note uh, is I have these um, plant terrariums, the test tube uh, plant terrariums, which these are really, really popular. I didn't know the way these worked until I made a few of these. and. You basically can put a stem of a leaf and in this test tube and it will grow roots. So kind of creepy, but they're very in right now. Um, I'll probably sell this. I, I think I was selling them um, like $10 per test tube. So this will be $30. I have another one behind the camera that's got four test tubes. So I'll sell that for probably maybe 35 or about 40. And then yeah, these I sell for about 18 to 20. Last bit of inventory that I'll highlight is this serving board. These do really well and this is just a very simple glue up. I put a routered edge on the bottom and I put two metal handles on this and put some uh, some food safe finish on this. It's not intended to be a cutting board because it has oak, but it, it's great for a serving tray, you know, putting maybe different salsas on here and then walking it over to the living room for game day or whatever. People love these. I'll probably sell these for about 40 to $45. Keep in mind, you have more cost associated with it because you have the the metal handle in here. So I'll probably take two or three of these. Um, these have been a pretty good seller for me in the past. Great, great gift here. Okay, up next, I'm gonna show you some of the supplies that I use, not necessarily uh, the inventory, but the supplies that I use to make sure that um, the customers have a great experience at my pop-up shop. Now, one quick note before we dive in, none of the products or brands I'm gonna talk about are sponsored. I just, I paid money for these products just like you would if you use them. And so, yeah, I just wanna get that out of the way. None of these are sponsored. First thing that I would recommend you have if you are going to have a pop-up shop is uh, things to put your products in when you sell them. So uh, what I do, I have a couple of sizes of brown paper bags here, 
the small ones are great for succulent planters. The larger ones are great for uh, cutting boards, circuitry boards, things like that. Now, this show that I'm about to do is just about two weeks before Christmas. So I also ordered about 50 uh, different patterns of Christmas bags. And that might be a small thing, but you know, these bags will stand out. And maybe if they see a bag with a charcuterie board handle sticking out, they'll be like, hey, where'd you, where'd you get that charcuterie board? And the customer can say, oh, it's this guy's booth down here. You should go check it out. Okay, next up is business cards. Now, I am a big believer. I haven't done an official study on this, but I'm a big believer that you can get as much as five to 10 times potential sales from handing out business cards as you can from what you sell that day at the show. So for example, someone comes up to my booth and maybe let's say that they are a realtor or a loan officer for a mortgage company and they want to buy my Shakuri boards in bulk to give us closing gifts. Well, they, what they can do is they can take my card, say, hey, I'll reach out to you. I even have a message on the back of my card saying, hey, I love to work with realtors and I love, I love to partner with your business and I might sell 15, 20, 30 charcuterie boards at a time to them to give us closing gifts and it's just a great way to, to get the word out. So anyways, I will probably have as many sales as I have. I'll probably have five times that many people say, hey, can I take your business card? I got these from Vista Prints. Great deal. Just watch how you, if you order them from Vista Prints, watch how many you get. Um, basically, I could get 100 for like $57 and then I was able to get 500 uh, business cards for $55 because I got free shipping with, anyways, just, just check the quantities and make sure you're getting the best deal. But yeah, I got 500 business cards for about 50 bucks. Definitely worth the investment. It really helps get your brand out there. Okay, up next is my Square payment system. Now, my first show that I ever did, I was thinking, you know what, I'm just gonna do cash only. I'm sure when people go to a market, um, they'll take cash. And then at the last minute, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and try getting one of these Square payment readers and get a degree. I'm so glad that I did that. I ended up making probably four to five times more sales through card payments and Apple Pay and Google Pay than I did cash. Even now at these um, at these pop-up shops and at different markets, people are expecting you to have a, a way to take credit cards and debit cards. So what I use for this is Square. You guys have probably used a Square system at a restaurant or at a shop before. And I'm telling you guys, it is just as easy to be the seller using a Square system as it is to be the buyer. Um, it works so, so easily. You download a POS app to your phone or iPad and it's it's super, super user friendly. I mean, I, I, and I know it sounds like they sponsor the channel. I promise they don't. I just really, really love their product. I made this little wooden stand. They send you a sticker when you buy one of their card readers. And so I just put this up on my booth so people know, hey, um, you know, steps, credit cards, American Express. Also, this is a different sticker, but this particular square reader, I think this is their $50 model. It also accepts Google Pay and Apple Pay, and you can even tap your card to, uh, to process payment. So really, really easy. It keeps the line moving too, which is super important um, because your booth, it's probably 10 foot by 10 foot or 12 foot by 12 foot. That's not a lot of space. And so once a customer has decided they're going to buy something, you want to complete that transaction as quickly as possible. And then they can you know, take their, their product and leave so that other people can, can see what you have in the booth. If there's a big backlog of customers and someone walks by, they're probably gonna think, well, I'll just come back later and they, they may never come back. And that's potential sales that you're missing out on. So the Square system is quick, it's easy. It accepts, if you get this version, it accepts basically any type of form of payment. Um, works really, really well. I wanted to show this. This is a uh, swipe card reader that you can plug into your phone. And it actually comes free, I think, or at the time that I bought it at least, it comes free with any square reader that you purchase. And I take this with me, I don't even think I've ever used it, but I take it with me just in case I have problems with this and, um, or, or it dies and it needs to charge for a little bit, I have a backup plan. So with something as important as a card reader, you need a backup plan. So just have this, you know, just take it with you and you can plug it to your phone and, and swipe if you need to. One more note, I know I've been talking a while, but this is probably the most important part of this video. Make sure that you have maybe a few extra battery packs that you can plug this into so it can be charging. Because if you go to a show that lasts 
10, uh, eight or 10 hours, this thing's gonna be on for a long time. And so you don't want it to die. It has a great battery life. It's never died on me, but just make sure you're prepared to charge it um, if you need to. This last thing probably goes without saying, but it's one of those things that's really easy to forget as you're putting your pop-up shop together. And that's cash for change. Now, this is the cash that I had from my last show. I need to go to the bank and deposit some of these ones and get some 10 and $20 bills. But I would, um, that's exactly what I would have. I'd have a ton of $1 bills. I would have a good many $5 bills and several 10s and 20s. People still do pay with cash and a lot of times, uh, a lot of times more wealthy people come by these pop-up shops and they only want to pay with hundreds. And so, you know, if someone buys an $18 succulent planner with a $100 bill, you don't want to have all your change, all your cash wiped out. And you don't want to ask them, hey, do you mind paying with card? My philosophy at a pop-up shop or really anywhere is you want to be as easy as possible to do business with. And that means that you need to be ready for however the customer wants to pay, or any questions that the customer may have. Be ready for them, be easy to do business with. And so I know that cash, um, it, it takes a little more effort, you know, to count the change and, and then type in that sale in your, in your Square POS system, but be easy to do business with, go get change. Trust me, you'll get more sales because of it. All right, up next we have price tags. Now this is the price tag system that I have right now and I think it works really, really well. I think it goes well with kind of my look and my brand, but all it is is a um, chalk, I think it's called chalkboard paper and it comes with this little marker. I'll link these tags in the description of this video. And then I made um, a ton of these. I mean, I probably have 50 of these and if you are interested, let me know in the comments. I can show you, I can create a video on how I made these and how you can make them very quickly and efficiently. But basically these are just little oak um, price tag holders that are really, really cute. And I just put these out so people know the price of everything. My first show, I didn't have this. And so anytime someone uh, was interested in, a, in an item, they had to ask me how much it was, which I felt like was kind of um, hindering, you know, some people, they just want to kind of look and think about the purchase in their mind before they ever talk to you about it. Some people aren't like that, but some people are. And so if they didn't know how much one of my cutting boards was, they might just be like, well, it's probably really expensive. I'll go find something else to buy. So I would really recommend having uh, price tags on all of your items. Like I said, let me know in the comments if you're interested in me showing you how I made these price tag holders. Also, I've actually sold a few of these. People like them for business card holders, which I had a, I'll have a business card displayed as well next to my uh, card stack. So, you know, you might sell these for, I'd sell them for like two bucks a piece and it's basically straight profit. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. No worries if not. Last thing you guys need to think about when making a pop-up shop is your booth setup. Now, obviously I'm inside, it's like six in the morning, and so I'm not going to go pull out my tent right now. But basically I have a 10 foot by 10 foot tent. I ordered it off Amazon, I'll put a link in the description. And uh, this is kind of like the, the, the covering for my pop-up shop, but there are several other elements that you want to keep in mind. Tables, um, some events will provide you with tables, but most of it, I found you want to bring your own. So think about your setup. Do you want to just have one table at the front? Do you want to have kind of a U-shape that the customers kind of walk into uh, your pop-up shop? They're underneath the cover of your tent. I like this because that way if it's raining, uh, they can step into your tent to get out of the rain. That's a, that's a really, really good thing. So you got tables, uh, tablecloths. I actually just ordered, I'll put a link in the description. This is a Christmas show. I have some Christmas looking tablecloths coming in. I also have the classic black tablecloths. I think the woodworking stuff shows up really well against this black tablecloth, looks really classy. And it kind of works for any events. So think about what you're selling, you know, make sure you have a tablecloth because I think having products, this might sound simple, but I think it makes a difference. Having products on just a gray plastic tabletop, it doesn't look good. Looks like you haven't thought through your setup. And so make sure you have a good, uh, high quality tablecloth. And then the last thing I would recommend is get some good, comfortable camping chairs that you take to sit down in. There are going to be ebbs and flows in the day. The longer the show is, the more time you'll probably spend kind of hanging out. There'll be a, maybe an hour rush and then maybe a parade is part of the event. And so everyone goes to see the parade. You're just kind of hanging out in your booth. So 
take a chair to sit down in these events they are more tiring than you think they will be my first event it was a three hour pop-up shop three hours and by the time i left that day i was exhausted now it was pretty much constant on my feet constantly talking to customers but uh, these events they're tiring and so if you ever get five minutes to sit down do that one more thing i would recommend you bring and that is help bring some people to help you with your pop-up shop maybe you have some family members and and they would just love to spend time with you and you say hey i'll i'll buy your meal at the at the food truck and we'll get to hang out maybe you pay them a hundred bucks you're definitely going to want someone to help you i mean this is just super practical what if you need to go get something to eat because it's a long event if you don't have anyone with you there's no one to watch the booth so you at least need two people i would honestly recommend having three to four people uh, that can help stock things watch things check out customers whatever so bring people with you it really really helps hey thank you so much for checking out this video if you have any further questions about um things i do for display or uh, anything about the payment system anything like that let me know in the comments i try to check those as as often as i can so that i can help answer your questions or just see what feedback you have uh, so yeah leave me a comment also if you learned something from this video if it was helpful if you could one more time uh, i'd just like to ask you to hit the like button it's totally free and it's the way you give back on youtube and if you really enjoyed today's content if you would like to subscribe to the channel that would mean so much to me and you'll be able to see the future videos that i'll be putting out hey thank you so much for checking out this video i'll talk to you soon